In this video, we're going to take a look at a decode problem called Robot Room Cleaner. So uh, you're given, so you're controlling a robot that is located somewhere in the room. The room is modeled as an M times N binary grid, where uh, zero represents a wall and then one represents an empty slot. So a robot starts a unknown location in the root that is guaranteed to be empty and you do not have access to the grid but you can move the robot using the given API robot. So you can see on the right, there is this interface right here, right? So you can see that we can move, we can turn left, we can turn right, and each turn is 90 degree. And we can also clean a particular cell, right? Which is the current cell, right? If we call this clean function, it will only clean the current cell. So you can see here we are, we can be able to use the robot using the given API. So your task is to use the robot to clean the entire room, clean every empty cell in the in the room. The robot will, uh, with the four given APIs, can move forward, turn left, turn right. Uh, each turn is ninety degrees. So when the robot tries to move into a wall, right, a wall cell, its bumper sensor detects the obstacle, so it will stay on the current cell. So basically, what it means is that like, this is our robot, right? So what happened is that, let's say there is a obstacle here and this robot is trying to enter this cell, right? If it goes straight forward, basically what happens is that it will stay at the current cell, not move because it has a sensor. If we try to force the robot to go forward, because there is a obstacle, the robot stays, okay? So this is basically the core logic there. And then you can see here, uh, design it algorithm to clean the entire room using the following API, right? We talked about this. And then you can see here, um, this is our input, right? So basically you can see, this is our little robot, and then we're trying to clean the room. You can see this is our grid, but this grid is unknown to us, right? So you can see in our clean room function, the robot, right, is only given. We don't give the grid. We do not know the grid. So what we do is that you can see here, uh, we can take this robot, right? And we can try to do some maybe DFS backtracking, right? Try to explore or basically try to explore each and every single corner of our grid, right? So you can see this is our little robot. So we go up. So maybe we can try to clean the current position, right? And then we go up, we clean it, and then we try to explore, do a DFS, try to clean this, try to clean this, try to clean this. Maybe once the robot hits a wall, right? And then we'll meet, we can try to do a DFS in other corners, right? But in this case, let's say if there's a situation where, you know, if we keep traversing, right? If we keep traversing, keep traversing, eventually we will end up in a dead corner, right? Like this. So what we do is that we have to do some backtracking, right? Just like any other backtracking questions we did. Uh, in this case, you can see the robot cannot, turn, cannot go left, cannot go straight, cannot go right, or sorry, cannot go Right, yes, in this case, this is the right, and this is the left, and then this is down, right? So in this case, the robot cannot go. So what we do is we have to backtrack to the previous, right, to the previous position. We try to explore all the options. In this case, we come from here, right? And then what we can do is that maybe we can go right, okay? So after we visit this, we know that all four directions are visited. So in this case, what we do is we go, we go backtracking, right? We backtrack to the original, this position, we know that we explore all the options, like here, here, we all explored it. So what we do is we come back to this location, right? So in this case, what we do is at this position, we know that we visit here, We this is out of bound, this is out of bound. This is already visited, so we explore all the options. And then we can just, you know, go to here, right? So this is basically how we solve the problem. It's basically we're gonna use backtracking and we're also gonna cache the, um, the visited places, right? So in this case, you can see the grid is not given to us. How do we cache this? Well, all we can say is that at the robot position, we can just set the current position as zero, zero, right? So just like a grid, right? We're at the center, right? We're at the center. Um, I, a couple of videos ago, I did a video called Robot Circle Bounded or something. Basically, what we can do is that we can basically set the current robot position as zero, zero, right? So zero, uh, 
in the x axis and then zero in the y axis, or in this case, doesn't really matter how you say it. Basically, we can say that the current robot is at the dead center, right? This side is, you know, we have four four uh, sides, right? We have the top top left, top right, the bottom right, bottom left, right? And then as well as all eight directions, right? So you can see here, what we can do is that we can say, this is the robot, right? We can cache the result. Like, let's say this is the grid, right? We don't know, where we are, but we can say that the current robot position is zero, zero, right? We can say that. And then what we can do is we can cache that. Maybe you kind of like use a set, right? And how do we cache this? What we can do, one way we can do is we can use a pair, right? Or we can use a string. We can basically add a zero here, right? The zero is an integer number. And then plus the empty string plus a zero, this will convert it into a entire string, right? Or you can use a string builder. There's many ways you can uh, format uh, converting this um, co coordinate to a string. And then what we, do, what we can do is that we can basically start here. And then what we can do is that we can do a DFS. We traverse all four directions, right? We traversing this, we go, we go, uh, we do a DFS down this path, right? And then once we traverse all the options, right? Maybe we can traverse all the options and then come back, and then something like this, and then come back. After we come back, what we can do is that because since we already visit a lot of places, what we can do is that maybe we can uh, try to go for another direction. Maybe we can go to right, right? And then we, when we go to right, you can see that this, this place is already visited. So in this case, we exhaust this option already. So we backtrack, right? So we backtrack to this position. And then what we do is that we can go try to go down. We know that if we go down, we already visit this position, right? And then maybe we can try to go left or something like that, right? So the goal is we want to, to um, DFS all four directions, right? And then for each path we go down to, right, we want to make sure we backtrack um, and then try to explore other options, right? So it's pretty simple DFS uh, questions. Um, and then I'm going to show you, look at the code. So inside the code, basically, this is what I did. So I put a set, a hash set, that keeps track of all the visited coordinates, right? All the visited coordinates that we have visited, we want to make sure to add it onto our hash set. And we also have a 2D array that represents the directions, right? You can see we all have all four directions. We have up, right? This is up. We have right. We also have down. We also have left, right? So basically you can see here, we have all four directions. Um, and then you can see here, so the reason why we do it this way, right? Because you can see what we're gonna do is that when we DFS, let's say, we're, let's say we have like all four directions, right? So you can see we have all four directions. This is the robot, it stays here. First, we go to the up, right? And then once we traverse all the path that we can, that we can, that we can explore, if we go up, then when we backtrack to the original position, which is here, we also have to rotate ourselves 90 degrees to the right and explore all the options on the right side. And then we come back to the original position and then we go uh, rotate one to the right, right? In this case, you can see we're going down, we're pointing down, and then we explore all the options in the in the downside. And then we rotate 90 degrees, we explore all the, all the options for the left, right? So you can see, that's that's the why that's why we position it this way, which I'm gonna show you why or in, in detail. Um, so you can see here, I'm good. I have this clean room function. It takes a robot. We call this DFS function. This DFS function takes four variables, uh, and then you can see this is the robot. This is the column, right? Sorry, this is the row. This is the column. This is the robot, and this is the arrow. The arrow basically means that where is the robot currently pointing at, right? Is it pointing up? Is it pointing right? Is it pointing down? Is it pointing left, right? So in this case, first, what we do is we take the coordinate that we have, we convert it into a string. We check to see if that can, if that coordinate contains in our hash set. If it does, right? If it does already contain, then we can just backtrack, right? Because we don't want to explore or visit uh, already visited coordinate, right? But if it's not visited, then what we have to do is we add the key onto the visited hash set, we clean the current position, and then what we do is we iterate four times. The reason why we iterate four times because currently our robot is pointing at the current direction, right? Which is the arrow, right? So what we do is that we say 
uh, we're trying to go straight. Like, let's try to go straight, robot.move, right? This robot.move returns a Boolean function. If it's true, that means that we can still go, that, we can, that means that we can go straight. If it returns false, that means that we're staying at the same cell because there, could, there is an obstacle that prevents us to go straight. So what we do is if we can be able to go straight, we get the current direction, right? And you can see the directions is basically arrow. So in this case, the initially, the arrow is zero, right? So in this case, basically means that it, the zero reference to the index of the directions array. So you can see the direction array index zero is up, right? In this case, we're going up. The arrow starting, right, is pointing up, right? So you can see the arrow starting is pointing up. So that's why you can see here, we go up first and then we do a DFS, right? down the up path. And then what we do is we change the direction. We turn the robot to the right 90 degrees clockwise. And then the key part for the modulo here is this, right? So let me show you something. So in this case, I have on my, on my, on my uh, console, right? So let's say we have zero, zero modulo of four, we have zero, right? So let's say we have index or the direction is zero, zero modulo four is zero. What about one modulo four is one, right? What about two modulo two, four is two, right? Three, in this case is, you know, three. But if I have four, um, you can see that it's zero. It's starting back. It's basically kind of like looping back, looping back to zero, right? So that's the key part here. So if arrow plus one, right, which we know that we're turning clockwise because you can see the next in the next element after index zero is index one and index one is right, right? So in this case, we're turning clockwise, we're going right. But eventually if we're at the left, if I want to turn one more to the right, I want to have modulo four, this will loop back to the first uh, direction, right? Which is up. So that's why we have this, uh, uh, basically this equation here, right? So once we have our arrow uh, pointing at the desired uh, dire desired uh, direction, uh, we will basically next iteration. We will basically do a DFS down to that path, right? So that's basically the goal. And then at the end, what we have to do is we have to move back. Uh, we have to backtrack to the original position, right? So let me just give you one last example. Right, so now you know how it how it works, right? Let's say uh, in this case, if I want to go straight, I explore all the options, maybe all the options here, 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 like let's say whatever, right? And then what we do is we, we come back to the original position. Um, in this case, I have to backtrack, right? After we done all the options for this cell, right? We visit here, we visit here, we visit here already, right? So what we do is we have to move back. And this move back function basically turns the robot uh, 180 degrees back, right? So let's say we have this robot right here. In this case, if I wanna, so this arrow, this robot currently pointing it straight. If I wanna turn it back, I will have to turn 180 degrees back. And then I will have to go back, one, uh, go forward one steps. And then what I have to do is that I have to turn back to the original direction, which is turn right 180 degree which I will get this robot pointing to straight. It doesn't really matter if I turn uh, turn right, turn right, or turn left, turn left, because we're like, all we have to do is that for the current uh, arrow that's pointing to, we basically turning 180 degrees back, right? So this is basically how we solve the problem. So there you have it. Thank you for watching.